Divested to me means that I'm not going to subscribe to the groupthink mentality that says my worth comes in my suffering, my labor, my being bullied, colorism, treatment. Um, no, anything, anything like that. No, 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 no. I'm gonna be around people who see the value in me, the way I see the value in other people, period. I'm not gonna be around people who think that my expectations are too high. Who the hell are you to judge my expectations? I let you sit with your low expectations. You can have them. What's up steelies welcome back and i call you guys steelies not because i'm trying to make you use the term i'm simply trying to find a united way to call everyone in because i know people identify as different you know things what have you just to unite us all here on this channel i call you steelies and i definitely feel like my regular commenters and my pledgers over on patreon are top tier steelies definitely feel that i want to talk about what divestment means to me and uh you know i'm not sure who coined this term so i know people get very offended when people talk about topics and don't credit them as i've stated before i've i've credited chris lincarazin a lot because i started learning about the interracial swirl dating through watching her videos. And I also did a, a FaceTime with her at some point, but I don't believe that that video is up on her channel anymore. So, you know, I always credit her with that. With the colorism thing, I, you know, I'm not sure who started talking about colorism on YouTube. So, I mean, this is, that's not really much I can do. I wanna talk about like what divestment means to me. I also had an interesting conversation about that on Twitter the other day. I'm like really hungry right now, just like being honest. I'm really hungry. <laughs> I've been drinking a lot of water. I just started doing the gallon water and a gallon of water a day. It's not a challenge. It's just something that I'm trying to do with my life right now but you know it, it it's interesting because it does distract me from wanting to snack and i'm also like filling myself up with water but like the, when the hunger hits you know i'm like this gotta get taken care of but i also gotta get these videos out yeah i want to talk about what divestment means to me and i had a white woman who's an acquaintance of mine actually uh and one of my patreons actually asked me about it the other day and i was like <gasps> You know, I was like, oh my God, like, I don't want to be the one, you know, I told them about happy birthday. You know, I don't, I don't know if you guys know, but people really like the happy birthday video on my channel. I don't know why, um, but you know, I did that years ago when I was a lot more jovial <laughs> and um, carefree, I guess. I'm like, I told him about the happy birthday song. Now I'm telling them about divestment, but like, come on, let's get real. There was actually white women on Twitter talking about divestment the other day and it was upsetting some of the divestment Twitter women. I definitely know those women didn't get it from me. I talk about it in my videos and one of my acquaintances and Patreon members was asking me about it. And that sparked me to thinking about what is it, right? What is divestment? I'll be honest, as a content creator, I don't really listen to a lot of other people's videos nowadays. I listen when I can, and I do like the entertainment, <laughs> the same as everyone else. I think it's very clear from watching various videos that people have a very different ideas of what divestment is. So let's talk about what is divestment and what are people's ideas of divestment? And finally, what is my idea of divestment? Let me talk first about what my idea of divestment is. And I think that it's very simple. For me, I believe that divestment is divesting from a state of mind and a groupthink mentality that oftentimes puts you as a black woman at the bottom. Divesting from a state of mind and mentality of groupthink that as a black woman oftentimes will put you at the bottom. 
okay? That's, <laughs> that's my definition of divestment, okay? I've never heard anyone else state a definition of it. If someone else has, please let me know, maybe link the video or something, I'll be happy to check it out. Continue this conversation further. That's what I think. Now, someone on Twitter pointed out, but you can, you can, you can want, right, all day, but if you don't put those wants into action, it means nothing. And I absolutely agree with that. So it can't just be your yearning for a better life. It has to be your working towards a better life. Absolutely. Now here's some of the definitions of divestment that I've heard from other channels. I feel like some people are like divestment is if you don't like BM at all, I'm gonna say BM because I'm not trying to be offensive at all. I'm just trying to explain, okay? At the same time, it's not like y'all don't come here and be bashing me and stuff. So, you know, I'm not gonna play like, I'm never gonna pretend I have friends that I don't have and I'm never gonna stand up for nobody that don't stand up for me. That being said, for my channel, I'm gonna say BM, okay? You have to ha want nothing to do with BM. <laughs> Okay, that's how I feel like some people are, okay? And I feel like a lot of them have uh, backgrounds or lives actually more similar to mine, even though I don't agree with that, okay? So let's be clear. I don't agree with that definition <laughs> that you like, you know, have to say goodbye to black men forever. Oh, that you have to say goodbye to BM forever, right? I don't, I don't agree with that definition. Because at the end of the day, I'm gonna talk to who I want. I'm gonna love who I want. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do whatever I want. That's where the not subscribing to groupthink part comes in for me. And I believe that I've been divested my entire life. I've, I've told y'all a million times, when I came into consciousness, I remember like the pictures of me as a child, miserable, miserable. I did not like that shit. When I came into consciousness, I was very aware that something was off, something was wrong. And going to private school since the age of five confirmed that for me. So I, I've been about that divestment life. And you know, uh, once again, just like when I was in PWI and racist and racial things kept happening towards me and I didn't know how to articulate that, a lot of that until one of my teachers from a PWI I attended in grade school, a private Catholic school, told me to read post-traumatic slave syndrome. And she's a white woman, okay? And I've had a lot of white women reaching out and supporting and, um, you know, subscribing to my Patreon, um, donating to my Cash App, just to be real, okay? I haven't had any white men doing that. That's fine. That's fine. Y'all, you you know, you'll do as you will. But keep in mind, you know, there's an imbalance. Well, I don't have it easy. And I'm trying to make something out of my life. I'm trying to be in a position where I don't have to worry about not being able to support myself because I stood up to racists at work. So, you know, support black women, <laughs> okay? As you guys noticed, no, I don't bash BM on my channel because as a divested woman, and this is a part of my definition as well, why would you talk about a dude that you don't care about 24 seven? I don't get it. Why would you do that? If you don't care about them, then why would you talk about them at all? When I'm done with somebody, you're done. Bye. You don't exist anymore. When I'm done with somebody, you don't exist anymore. And it would be hard pressed for you to tell me that they do. You're done. All social media, cut. The phone, cut. Bye. I lose your number. I can never reach you again. Bye. I don't talk about dudes I don't care about. And I believe based on knowing my husband for 10 years, that he would not approve of that. He would not be attracted to that and he wouldn't find that interesting. So that's just not something that I'm gonna do because I don't get it and I don't relate to it. Also keep in mind, even though I grew up in the hood, I've been divested, you know, with my hypergamous man. I'm just using terms that you guys know, okay? I don't talk like this in real life. I've been divested with my hypergamous man, okay, for 10 years. So when we first moved in together, which was the second year that we started dating, I was out of the hood. And at that point I had lived in the hood, you know, most of my life. But also keep in mind from 18 to 22, I lived on campus for undergrad. 
and I, it was a very nice campus, decent enough, you know? It's, it's suburban, because it's a, it's a college campus. You know what I'm saying? I've had a lot of adult years of not having to deal with a lot of the stuff that I had to deal with when I was living in the hood growing up, right? I think that it is disingenuous as fuck for other women, for example, to pretend that they have the same plight as black women because you have no idea what it's like to have to walk down the street when you live in, in a hood, a rough place, the ghetto, whatever y'all wanna call it, and these dudes are hounding you and, and the street harassment is, there is unprecedented. There's no street harassment like it. And you know, white women have pointed that out and it happens to them because they're in gentrified spaces or big cities, what have you, okay? So I just feel like black women do have a righteous reason to say, I'm tired of this abuse, but I don't have the fire against just BM in the hood because my experience of the hood was being failed on multiple levels by multiple people and it was men and women. And though I did deal with street harassment in the hood the years that I lived there and it was jarring and it was appalling. I had a man in an EMT truck when I lived in East Orange, New Jersey. Okay, stand up, okay. Okay, lived in East Orange, New Jersey. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. This nigga in the EMT truck following me in, in his EMT tr bus, truck, van, whatever it is. I was like, dude, like how unprofessional he's following me. That's scary. I've been grabbed, grabbed at, you know? I'm gonna be honest, since I'm older now, they, you know, they leave me alone for the most part. If I'm, you know, walking down, you know, some of these streets, you know, where that would be more common in, in New York. They leave me alone. They leave me alone <laughs> for the most part. Ken is also with me a lot more. So there's that. Like the other day, like he's like 19, 20 year olds was like, that's your girl, you know, <laughs> to Ken. I, it's sweet, it's cute. I mean, I, I teach young kids. So a lot of it, I, you know, I'm like, I look at young kids. I'm like, oh, it's young kids. When it's the 40 year olds, Okay, I'm not with it. When it's the younger, you know, the younger guys, the 19, 20 year, I'm like, you know, I teach kids, I get it. I'm a lot less offended because I'm older now and I don't have to deal with it 24 seven. If you had to deal with it 24 seven, you have a right to be angry about that shit, point blank period. So I'm not gonna tell you anybody what they're, to change their definition of divestment or what divestment means to them or whatever, okay? I feel like some people also feel like divestment means like, you have to like be slayed to the gods 24 seven, that you have to have like big money, right? That the guy that you've divest divested with has to be rich, okay? And just going back to the divested is like no BM, like by any means. Um, I also feel like those people are like, you know, you have to divest with a non BM. Whereas um, these other people feel like um, you can be with a BM and be divested because you've left, you know, poverty, right? You've left all of the, the chaos of the hood, right? And you're doing better financially. We're not millionaires over here. And some, and some people, I feel like their definition by what they say is like, oh, the guy's gotta be like a millionaire. We're not millionaires over here by any means, <laughs> but I'm doing a lot better in life socially, economically than I did growing up, clearly. And also again, you know, I grew up in foster care, so there was that. I understand all those different viewpoints and I tend to take different points that the women have. I agree with some, might disagree with others, but I think overall, the message is, <laughs> I don't wanna be like, get out, like get out, you know. There are black communities that are not hoods. Let's be clear about that. There are black communities that are not hoods or ghettos. So like I told you guys, like I tried to live in a more diverse, it wasn't a black community, but the building had a lot more black people than any other building we've ever lived in, luxury apartment building we've ever lived in. And I chose that deliberately because I was like, I wanna be around black people. Like I wanna be around the more diverse. I don't want like everything to be this like suburban experience. And like I said, because there was more black people living in the building, and that was because the building took section eight applicants. And that's fine, um, I'm just being honest because there were more people, black people in the building, black people worked at, in the building. And those black people were Stephen from Django. <laughs> 
And I'm not dealing with that. I cannot deal with raccoons. I cannot. It looks so gross to me to see, and they're always older. They're always like 40 and up. And it just looks so gross to me to watch them. Like, okay, they're always like 37 and up. And they, you know, just like to watch them looking for white approval and validation and catering to white fragility. It's it's gross. I don't like to look at it. So we had to, we had to leave there. And coincidentally enough, thank God we did because it, that ended up being a building that was in the hot zone in Westchester for the coronavirus pandemic outbreak. And they were having to get like food from the National Guard. Like I can't imagine having to still live in that building and had to have dealt with that. So thank God, Woo. thank God. You know, my intuition is on point. One of the points that someone made on Twitter having a conversation about this was that there are women who they're poor, they live in the hood or the ghetto, but they don't want to live there. And you know, that reminds me of like my grandmother who couldn't get a house in a white neighborhood when she first moved to Rochester and ended up living in a black neighborhood that got worse and worse because of everything everyone's done for us. And she wanted to move back to North Carolina where she was from. She stayed up north for us because the courts wouldn't let her have us because she was too old, um, according to them. So, There are women who don't live in the suburbs or in gated communities that want a better life for themselves and their children. And they have to live in the hood because there are a lot of systems at work designed to make life extremely hard for black Americans. And that is a fact. That is a fact that a lot of divested women I feel like don't understand. You can be easy on yourself and others because it's not easy out here for us. It is not. So if that's your situation, you know, then you have to do everything that it takes to get into a better situation. It's sacrifice. And the sacrifice isn't just you getting up and going to work. The sacrifice is personal. It's not just political. It's not just financial. It's social right? You're gonna have to cut certain people off. You're gonna have to cut certain mindsets off. I'm not gonna be around women who think that it's valiant to struggle. I'm not. We don't have anything in common at that point. Now, I know women who don't feel that way, who don't think it's valiant to struggle, but they still, they don't live in the suburbs or in gated communities, not yet. You know, people are young, people are working on it. It's hard out here. So yeah, divested to me means that I'm not going to subscribe to the groupthink mentality that says my worth comes in my suffering, my labor, my being bullied, colorism, treatment. I'm um, no, anything, anything like that. No, 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 no. I'm gonna be around people who see the value in me the way I see the value in other people, period. I'm not going to be around people who think that my expectations are too high. Who the hell are you to judge my expectations? I let you sit with your low expectations. You can have them. And I'll never be lonely because I'm married. Somebody that I divested from. Don't try to say, have fun being lonely. That's why he shouted as he hung up. A man. A DM. Boy, I'm married. I don't think you'll ever know what it's like. Okay, with that, I have to get going. Okay, thank you for watching. Hit the notification bell. Follow me on Patreon. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.